Okay, we're making some more room for TYM tractors here in New Hampshire. Uh, today we're gonna go over the 2515 in depth. We're gonna go head to head, hydrostatic model versus the gear model. We're gonna race them. We're gonna dig some dirt. We're gonna lift up tractors in the air uh, with themselves. It's gonna be awesome. Stick around, enjoy the video. How's it going guys? We're here today to teach you all about the TYM 2515 tractor. We're going to start at the front, work our way around and tell you what makes this so special. But first, we got a big frame tractor with a 24 horsepower engine. So this is like the same size comparably to like our 474, which is a 48 horse tractor. It only has 24 horsepower, 21 at the PTO. Why is that? So. US emission standards require anything over 25 horsepower to have a lot more complications, such as possibly a, a DPF filter, EGR system, DEF fluid after treatment. Um, this doesn't have any of that. So with, thanks to uh, the efficiencies of hydraulics and um, modern technology, you could still do a lot with just 24 horsepower. No emissions, good old fashioned diesel engine. <laughs> Starting at the front, this loader is a beast. This will lift 2,200 pounds at the pins. If that's not impressive enough as itself, uh, it actually sticks out a lot further than a lot of other tractors and a lot of the TYM models, to be honest. Um, so 2,200 pounds at the pins, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can lift a ton of pellets. Um, with a uh, weight block and loaded tires, it's possible, but I wouldn't count on it because by the time you put that heavy fork carriage and forks, and then that weights out a little further, I really recommend like a, a 574 or 494 with a weight block and loaded tires for that. Um, skid steer, quick attach, universal front end mount system, um, super easy, just flip those levers, um, and you can back right out under it, back right up underneath these ears to uh, reattach, super simple. Uh, coming around, you'll see this tractor has huge front axles. I actually really like uh, the steering cylinder and tie rod setup on this. It's very protected, it, it's elevated. So if you're running over a bunch of brush, um, it would be really hard to mess this up. It's very rugged. Um, I like the protective guard over here, um, great setup. Scum standard, a little uh, gimmicky toolbox, but hey, pretty useful. Um, I love where they put the 7.7 .7 gallon fuel tank on this model. Um, if you have a 35 to 45 pound jug of fuel you're trying to tip up, it's a lot easier than some of the little tractors. It's behind the seat and you have to kind of get it up higher. I really like how this is down low, super easy to um, fill up. Coming around, we'll get to the operator station after, but coming around, you have a ridiculously beefy three-point system on this tractor. Um, these three-point link arms are what you'd see on like a 55 horse tractor. This lifts 3,306 pounds um, at the three-point. Pretty impressive. The one thing I don't like about this tractor though, is it doesn't come with any rear remote standard. Those have to be added. Um, adjustable, uh, so you got three holes of adjustability here, and then you also have the adjustability down below. It does not have telescopic um, link arms uh, to hook up to attachments, a little bit easier. These are just fixed, but not a big deal. But a lot of adjustability, a um, lot of strength, a lot of capacity back there. Coming around, you will see this model is a hydrostatic transmission, meaning you just have a easy forward pedal and reverse pedal. Um, there's no shift lever up on the left side. There's no clutch. Super easy to operate. This has uh, three different uh, ranges. So if you got a big load, drop it down in low. But if you want that top end speed, put it up in the third gear. Um, and also this has auto throttle. So as you press down on this throttle, it's also going to um, rev up the engine. And uh, so there's two throttle cables. You got this throttle cable, 
and then you got this throttle cable as well. So not only is it giving more fuel to the engine, but your transmission's actually allowing that fluid to flow and to go forward. So what that means is you can keep the RPMs down while you're operating and uh, just you, you have power when you need it. Super easy, super quiet, um, less obnoxious, doesn't need to be wound up all the time. However, if you do need the loader speed um, or that instant torque, then just keep the thing revved right up. Speaking of instant torque, the TYM website says that the hydrostatic model is a little faster than the gear model. We wanted to test that out ourselves and what we found was a little surprising. The gear model actually put the power to the ground a little bit better um, and was faster to get up to top speed and then they were pretty much dead even from there. The loader control lever on this is mounted uh, on, on the loader frame itself, um, which is a lot different than some of the other models that are mounted on the fender. What I like about this though, is it's true, high, this rod, this is a true mechanical mechanism right into the valve body with no cables. The other ones have a cable system, the ones on the fender. This is super simple, super reliable, no cables to ever stick down the road. Um, it, it's not quite as uh, comfortable to operate, I'll be completely honest. Um, not quite as easy to get on this side of the tractor, but it's definitely a pretty proven and reliable setup. In comparison, shown here, you have a gear shuttle shift transmission. So you have your forward, neutral, reverse. Down here, you have your clutch. You have three ranges four gears for a total of 12 forward speeds and 12 reverse speeds. So I did quite a bit of research leading up to this video about the engine in specific of this model. I called our friends over at TYM and was like, hey, like, am I crazy or is the block on the 2515 the same as the 3015, 3515, and 4215? They're like, oh yeah, that thing is stout um, way way oversized for the tractor it's just tuned down to low rpms to be able to stay under that threshold for emissions like oh okay makes sense given the size of the tractor and the similarities in uh the 3015 3515 etc pretty much the same exact engine the bones and then they change a lot of components like the cam the injection pump some of the orifice on the injectors um and i was like okay that makes sense um they just essentially are restricting the fuel to bring down the RPM, to bring down the horsepower, to make it meet emission standards being under 25 horsepower. Um, so pretty significant difference in this engine, which can go up to a 42 horse tractor in comparison to like a 264 um, tractor, again, a 24 horse tractor, but it's going to turn way higher RPMs to achieve that power. Um, a lot of that's just due to the sheer size of the engine, the displacement. A 264 engine uh, is going to have a 1175 cc displacement, where this is going to have a 1715 cc displacement uh, and a class B flywheel housing uh, as opposed to a class A. So just everything in general is bigger about this. Um, they're holding back the power, they're holding back the fuel. No, you can't turn it up. No, you can't void your warranty. We've thought about playing around with one, but the camshaft is different in the 3015, which is a big component to pair up to be able to have that extra horsepower. Okay, let's talk weights. This is the heaviest 24 horsepower tractor on the market, hands down. If I'm wrong, somebody please comment below, but I have not seen anything even remotely close to it. Just the tractor itself, not the loader, weighs 2,969 pounds. The loader weighs 1,008 pounds, and then if you were to load the rear tires, 75% full would be 41 gallons per tire, um, which would equate to a total between both of them of 882 added pounds with rim guard, beet juice, tire liquid ballast, um, bringing the total weight of this um, as it could look just like here, but with weight in the tires to 4,859 pounds. That's kind of crazy. Um, almost a 5,000 pound tractor uh, in 24 horsepower. 
One comparison I found quite fascinating on this, as you can see, this housing is huge. You got your hydraulic fill back here. Um, this tractor holds 9.8 gallons of hydraulic fluid in comparison to a 264, which only holds 4.7 gallons. So that just goes to show how much more mass there is to the drivetrain as they mass produce it to be used also in the 3015. Uh, 3515 and 4215. So you have a 42 horsepower drivetrain um, in a uh, 24 horse model. Okay, so to open the hood on this, you're gonna pull this lever, pull this forward, and then down here, you just pull out this right here, and then the hood lifts right up. All your serviceable components are super easy to access. Um, battery is convenient. You got a screen here that's removable to clean out to um, protect your radiator from debris getting built up and sucked against it due to the fan. Um, coming around here, uh, you'll have your filter easy to access, um, all your fill points. Um, it's not like a, a modern car where you need a, a college degree to figure out how to change a headlight. This thing's pretty simple. Um, while we're down here, just look at the size of the loader um, mount brackets. Um, that's like, I believe, three quarter, if not seven eighths thick steel. Okay, now for my favorite part about this tractor, a mechanical fuel injected motor. So simple, so reliable. Um, our techs love them. There's no computer that they have to go in and mess with if somebody ever needs to replace a sensor or knock something off. It doesn't need to get reprogrammed. This is very basic. Um, you don't have any sort of uh, ECU or ECM, like an engine control module. You literally just have one, one basic module that controls the dash, um, your charging system for your battery, and your fuel shutoff. So like to kill this engine, um, you literally, it's like shutting off the fuel else it would run forever. Um, same with like starting it. All it's doing is just turning it over and it automatically is pumping fuel to it at a certain RPM based on um, the fuel injection pump um, at what position the, uh, um, the throttle cables are at. And throttle cables, super simple. You got one that runs from the hand control manual lever up top. And then you got one that's connected to your pedal um, so that as you're driving auto throttle, kind of you push down and it revs it up. Uh, and uh, as your hydraulic transmission is kind of releasing um, some of the fluid there to flow, the engine's cranking up an RPM to match the demand for power. Um, super simple. Um, you will not find this on, on many other tractors. Uh, very few electronics. That's the beauty of these. We've yet to ever see one of these mechanical fuel injected 24 horsepower engines come back with an issue. Um, we have, I mean, this is very comparable to the 264 engine. We probably sold about, oh man, I would say 800 of those tractors over the past four years at some of our uh, sister stores up in Maine. And that, uh, we've never seen one come back as a failure. I mean, people do stupid stuff. They've rolled them over and left them running, rolling over and um, we've had a few engine failures from stuff like that. We've had people try to run biodiesel and um, mess up some fuel systems. But out of the 800 plus 264s we got out in the field with a very similar engine to this, I can't say that uh, we've had one failure. Um, so that's pretty amazing. I don't expect anything different out of the 2515. This is a new model, um, but these things are great. Okay, so a quick history lesson um, on TYM. Uh, TYM is a publicly traded company on the Korean Stock Exchange. Um, they have owned a good portion of Kukje Machinery for uh, many years. Kukje Machinery owns Branson. Um, so as of January 2023, they finalized the uh, complete acquisition and it all got merged together. So um, everything's TYM now. So this was... Uh, uh, formerly known as a Branson model tractor, and it's now, um, everything's TYM. Same as Kukje engines, been around for a lot of years. They've built, uh, they've done contract work for Cummins um, and a lot of other very well-respected engine manufacturers for a lot of years. And uh, so Kukje, 
one of the most respected engine manufacturers in the world. Now it's called a TYM. So everything's called TYM now. Um, so you have TYM, owned Kukche, owned Branson, all TYM. These tractors come with a six year warranty. The first two years is bumper to bumper. Um, the remaining four years and up to 3000 hours is gonna be for the uh, engine, transmission, any of your driveline components. Um, and also I wanna note that that is for personal use. The commercial warranty is slightly less. Um, and also your uh, attachments such as loader, backhoe, and for the smaller tractors, if you have a belly mower, those are all gonna be a one year warranty. Thank you guys for watching. YouTube's only so exciting, so you guys gotta be sure to follow us on Instagram for some sweet videos and like us on Facebook. Central New Hampshire trailers and equipment in Loudon, New Hampshire.